Yo. Hello Dragonfly Swarm. So Yaimiko is finally returning for her first rerun banner in the second half of 3.2 and I wanted to talk about what her strength is right now because the general consensus is that she's been massively buffed thanks to Dendro, which is very true. Lots of new potential for her damage output, but there are also some very important considerations you should make before pulling for her because there's a reason she sparked so much controversy during her first banner and that reason has carried over into the Dendro meta as well, unfortunately. So in this video, I'm going to explain everything you need to know about where Yaimiko stands as of 3.2 for the sake of pulling or saving. But before I start, if you haven't already, you should totally subscribe because it very much helps my channel and only a small portion of my viewers are actually subscribed. All right, we're going to zap right into this video by first asking a very important question. Exactly how much has Yai been buffed by Aggravate and why is she so strong with Aggravate teams as opposed to, for example, a few other Electro characters? So Aggravate is kind of a weird reaction because it benefits from crit bonuses and external damage percent bonuses, but it also enjoys and benefits from being spammed with quantity over quality in mind. This basically just means that characters who can trigger a bunch of aggravates tend to enjoy aggravate teams dramatically more than those who can't, as opposed to reactions like Melt and Vaporize that typically prefer buffing larger and slower instances of damage, hence quality over quantity. So for example, characters like Kuki Shinobu don't really love aggravate because she doesn't apply much electro, plus she also doesn't typically build for crit ratios or damage percents, but that was already a given. But then there are characters like Fischl or Yaimiko who apply a ton of Electro and enjoy building crit and damage percent, so they very much benefit from Aggravate. And in Yaimiko's case, she averages around 9 to 10 Electro applications per rotation, which is pretty good. And with the very simple math that I'm going to slap on the screen, you can actually see that in terms of raw damage output, placing Yai in an Aggravate team nets an average of a 35% damage increase over teams where she isn't using Aggravate. That is a very considerable damage bonus, but it doesn't include further buffs from characters like Sucrose or Dendro Resonance, attack buffs, etc., so the percent difference could could end up being a bit higher or lower case by case. The point with this math though is that Yaimiko's entire kit benefits quite well from aggravates and since Dendro teams have so many external EM buffing options, Miko can lean quite heavily into her 4th ascension passive which for example with 300 elemental mastery will grant Yai's turrets roughly a 45% damage increase which is crazy. And that's all to say that yes Yaimiko is one of the lucky electro characters that saw quite significant buffs with Dendro's release. But those were only buffs to her damage output and it begs another question is she actually practical in Dendro teams? Because one of Miko's biggest problems, which I will discuss later in detail, is that she has a very rough reputation as a clunky and impractical character, thus leading a lot of teams to favor other Electro units simply because of how ridiculously impractical her kit is as opposed to those other units. So for Hyper Bloom teams, Yai is objectively a, a pretty practical character. Her turrets can actually target Bloom Seeds, and since her turret damage scales with EM, she can play pretty well as an Electro trigger for these types of teams. You'll just have to keep in mind that for most instances of Hyper Bloom teams, her energy management will be a very big pain to work with, and in general, I wouldn't recommend pulling Miko just for Hyper Bloom teams. However, with Quicken teams, Yai is actually quite practical, and some of this, for better or for worse, has to do with the fact that she pairs very well with Fischl, who is an absolute beast in Quicken teams. And this is mostly because without Fischl, Yai will have a very hard time managing her burst cost. Not to say she's exclusively tied to Fischl, but you'll notice teams without Fischl's help are gonna feel a little clunky. So usually with Yai's Quicken teams, you'll see Fischl, Yai, and a Dendro character as your core, and then the last slot will flex to finalize the team's purpose. For example, sometimes you'll see Tignati, Fischl, Yai, and Zhongli, which is a team revolving around Tignati's spread damage being supported by, and also supporting, Yai and Fischl's electro damage and aggravates. But I suppose you could also run teams like Kuching, Yai, an off-field Dendro unit, and a flex spot for the purposes of focusing the team more on electro damage than spread damage. There are quite a lot of variations for Quicken teams, and Yai fits very well into basically all of them. You'll just have to slot her carefully because of her severe lack of utility and energy management. This is unfortunately an issue that's pretty unique to Yaimiko because despite her very good damage output, she's one of the only off-field DPS units in the game that provides literally almost zero utility to her team. So objectively speaking, the only reason to slot her into any given team is to capitalize on her extremely high damage output, which again, unfortunately, is something that a lot of other teams can do to a similar extent at less of a cost and with less hoops to jump through. And this leads me to my next point, which eh, could upset some people. I want to compare Fischl and Yaimiko against one another because Fischl is the prime target that I'm referring to when I say that other characters can do the job better. 
or similarly. Now, obviously for most Dendro teams, you're gonna slot these two together anyways, so this comparison is less of an issue than it once was, but it does still apply, and it's still important to recognize this comparison before you spend your money on Yai. So what these two have in common is that their primary design is to act as an off-field damage dealer, Yai with her powerful turret strikes and Fischl with Oz. And already one issue with Yai is that despite her inherent design as an off-field carry, she takes up a lot of field time to set up her abilities, and none of which field time provides her any survivability or fluidity to make her gameplay easier. And Fischl on the other hand has Oz, and all she has to do is swap onto the field, summon Oz, and then swap back off. It's objectively a much more time efficient playstyle and far easier to work with than Yai's rotations. I will say Dendro teams have opened up a lot more flexibility for Yai's rotations, but they're still sometimes slim. But beyond that, as I mentioned earlier, Yai Miko is one of the only off-field carries in the entire game that provides basically zero utility, and on the other hand, Fischl is regarded as one of the best battery characters in the game. What does this all mean so far? Well, in terms of functionality, Fischl is a superior character to Yai Miko, and I know people are going to argue about this in the comments, I am sorry, but that's just the product of having a character who provides nothing other than damage. Fischl is a character who has always been regarded as valuable, not only because she's a 4 star, but also because she provides amazing energy battery potential as well as very good off-field damage and electro application. And on top of all of that, as I said earlier, she's very easy to slot into teams because of how simple her setup is. So yes, in terms of practicality and utility, Fischl is a better off-fielder than Yaimiko. However, Yaimiko's damage on the other hand is actually superior to Fischl's, and god I would hope it is, otherwise she would be completely pointless. The funny thing is, is that yes, a C6 Fischl is typically outdamaged by a C0 Yaimiko, but outside of Dendro teams, the difference in their damage output at similar investment is actually relatively low. But since Yai slots into Dendro teams so well and has a built-in EM incentive, she actually pulls ahead even further when you consider their damage outputs in Quicken teams. And obviously, case by case, there will be some scenarios where Yai will be more suitable than Fischl, some where Fischl will be more suitable than Yai, and a lot of scenarios where they actually just do their best when working together. But overall, with the Yai and Fischl comparison, the only objective reason to pull for Yai Miko if you already have Fischl is if you're looking for noticeably more damage output, especially in Dendro teams where they can work together, or you're a Yai Miko shrimp, which is valid. So, all in all, has Yai been quote unquote saved by Dendro, and is she worth pulling in 3.2? Well, if you're looking to add an expensive investment into your Dendro related teams with high DPS and an interesting playstyle, Yai Miko might actually be for you. She's gained significant damage buffs and even some indirect quality of life buffs thanks to her ability to easily lean into her EM scaling now, plus she just happens to work a bit more smoothly in Dendro teams than she does in other teams. So it's worth arguing that she's a much more valuable character to pull for than she once was, under the assumption that you're aware she only provides personal damage to any given team. And so the flip side of that question is, if you're looking for a versatile impractical character, maybe one who can fit into many different teams with good utility and a well-rounded kit, Yaimiko will very probably not be the character for you. She suffers from a complete lack of utility, requires a team to build around her despite typically playing as an off-field or quick swap DPS, and is quite tricky to work with when setting up her abilities on the field. And in that regard, you would for better or for worse be better off by investing in someone like Shinobu for enabling and reaction carrying, Fischl and or Beto for generally powerful off-field electro carrying, and other respectable electro characters as well. This isn't at all to say that Yaimiko is bad, because she does boast a very high DPS and she performs her role functionally well. It's simply to say that I don't recommend pulling for her if your expectations are higher than what she can provide, which is basically just a lot of DPS. I guess you can argue that she provides personal damage and reaction damage in Hyperbloom teams, and she works quite well in them, whether by triggering Hyperblooms with her normal attacks or allowing her turrets to do the job. And it's also a safe assumption that Nahida will pair well with Miko as well, given that since they're both Catalyst users, they should theoretically be able to swap places driving Quicken teams or Hyperbloom teams, so that's something else to keep in mind, even though it's just an educated assumption based on what Hoyoverse has revealed to everyone. Of course, we won't know that officially for a few more days, but until then, this video is ending! If you enjoyed it or it helped you in any way, please leave a like and consider subscribing, and I will see you in the next video. Oh my god, also join my Discord server. I keep forgetting to shamelessly plug that. Whoa.